Hello, welcome back to the QDR Crusaders, the art podcast with lovely members, lovely stories, lovely art, and other lovely things. This is episode 177 for December 15th, 2015. A lot of repeated numbers there. And speaking of repeated numbers, we've got some repeated members this week. My name is Rainbow Plasma. I am the organizer and host of the podcast, and occasionally I like to improv the intro to see my uh, cast members uh, squirm. And those cast members are... <gasps> Burnda One, the special guest coordinator. I am FlutterGuy317. I am the media manager, and this week I'll be editing. And speaking of improv, we're going to improvise a Mr. Joel, a.k.a. Atmos Bark, into this podcast, <laughs> because he currently is on his way home, uh, but we are on a tight schedule, uh, because we're impatient. Um, <laughs> and so what will happen is he will jump in at some point, re- full on guns blazing recording, and Beep we'll beep. add him in at some point. But right now he's not here, but he should be in the next five to ten minutes or so. Yep. But Hopefully. until then, yeah. it's just going to be the three of us. So why don't we pass some time and talk about our lives? So sit down, children, and we'll tell you some stories about, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, your exams, Max? Yep. Good. Nice one. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my, my school ended last week, or this week on Monday, uh, which would be last week on Monday if you're listening to this. Great. Good job, Max. Hmm. Um, anyways, uh, I've been having exams out the butt. Uh, basically, what happened was I have four exams in four days, which uh, as of time of recording, I am almost done. Um, I had two exams on Wednesday, one take-home exam that I had to hand in, and another exam at 2 p.m. I had an exam at 9 a.m. this morning, and I have an exam tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. as well. Mm. So as soon as I'm done recording this podcast, I'm going to make myself dinner and then study for that, which is fun. Get recorded. Nice. Yeah. So I have those, and then next Saturday, I have my final exam. So I have a week off in between my two final exams. So that's exams fun. on, you said Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Who takes exams on Saturday? I got two Saturday exams this semester. So lovely. So this Friday was my last official day that I have to go to school. Uh, The semester ends uh, next Friday, but I don't have a single exam, not a one. So get wrecked. But instead, in their stead, I have uh, three large major projects that i have to do and i only have one of which done and turned in and so in the next three days i have to uh finish my two uh extravagantly large large projects and turn them in Mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh yeah so uh, i hate you uh but i think that should really go without saying uh, (laughs) because i i actually had two projects on top of these exams that i had to do in the last week or so so um yeah i uh i think it's fair to say that there is a fiery pit in tartarus with your name on it Uh, i've labeled (laughs) it for you i actually bought it for you it's your christmas gift i'm sorry i spoiled it Uh, and it's got your name on it so you know it's it's a great vacation spot burned you know you go down there you get a tan never come back actually a Um, it's a fun fact that the fifth layer of hell is a reserved for dtc majors so (laughs) what does that mean (laughs) what is a dtc major a dtc major is a digital technology and culture major it's the degree i'm going for in my university sorry i'm bored already joel's here (laughs) wow (laughs) hi joel hi joel how's it going hey so we're, we're we're about halfway through talking about something that doesn't matter um uh, dtc <laughs> how is your uh how is your trip back joel now that you're finally here oh that was that was interesting <laughs> yeah yeah tell us all about it we, the, everything else that we've written down here is is boring i so. heard there was like fire and twisted metal and bodies strewn about the streets <laughs> well i mean one of those three things oh two okay. of those three things okay uh <laughs> wait let me guess which one <laughs> the bodies on. and the twisted metal the suspense <laughs> Yes, what Ted said. <laughs> nice. Oh my. <laughs> well, was, well, that was, was a great nice. story. Never <laughs> yeah. mind. It, it was. It wasn't very nice. <laughs> Somebody had a. All right. Day. Well then. So hmm. what even happened? Did we even say? No, <laughs> that's why I was waiting for him to say. <laughs> oh, I was. I was not here. I, I was gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because this is the important part. Because oh, you were. I was. I was delayed by a car crash. Not mine. There we go. Somebody else's right. car crash. There yeah. we go. 
Okay. Yay. Yay. Aww. I mean, not yay, but oh. I, I didn't. I didn't. Car- I didn't get a car crash, so I'm fine. So, you know. Mm. <laughs> sympathy isn't my strong suit either. <laughs> <laughs> I have sympathy. Correct. Oh no, I have empathy. I just don't have sympathy. Yeah. Um. So you said that the weather was weird down there, Joel. Yeah. It. it there was a like huge storm last night, and it's still mm. raining now. And okay. everybody forgets how to drive as soon as it starts raining. Yeah. Well, as soon as you said that, um, Ted and I were talking about the fact that this happens in places that get snow, but only like once a year, mm-hmm. is that nobody knows how to drive in snow if they don't do it regularly. So like the middle of the United States is full of notoriously horrible drivers <laughs> in snow Yeah. Uh, because they just don't experience it that often. So I imagine places that don't get a lot of rain are probably like that when it rains. Oh, we get a lot of rain. It's just people still don't know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> we get heaps people of rain during just, summer. People Literally. are just bad at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of the weather, we were talking about the fact that... Uh, so I live in the capital of Canada, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, because if you don't know, then you should be ashamed. It's Maple Leaf Canada, uh, by the way. I don't know what it is. Is it's, it Quebec? It's, 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 it's hockey, actually. Quebec? <laughs> Quebec. <laughs> All right, cool. It's in... Guibecamo Bay, right? <laughs> Guibecamo, nice. Yeah. Um, so, so it's it's December eleventh in the nation's capital, and um, it hasn't snowed yet. So it's it's snowed maybe twice, but it's never stayed on the ground. Like there's, been, it's just not stayed on the ground. This is crazy. That's December eleventh, and it still hasn't snowed. But now, of course, what is the capital of Canada? <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't know what it is. It's Ottawa. Ottawa. Okay. I live in Ottawa. Okay. I've lived in Ottawa for the last three and a half years. <laughs> I don't know. Well, geometry? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice geometry. Um, but yeah, now that I've said that it hasn't snowed here, it obviously is going to snow in the next couple of days before before the podcast comes out. Because, you know. It's, it's going it's it's to a... snow like as soon as you stop recording. Or while we're recording. Right. And you look yeah. out the window, it's going to be, oh, right. it looks like Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Except it's supposed to be 60 degrees tomorrow, um, Fahrenheit. Which That's really hot. It's almost boiling water, right? Oh, wait. Sorry, Fahrenheit. (laughs) Which is uh, about 20 degrees. Well, no, maybe not. It's like 18 degrees. It's like 15. 15, yeah. Closer to 15, yeah. Yeah. I don't know the conversion. I just use Celsius all the time. Except for when someone tells me. Says the person who just said 60. Yeah, except for (laughs) when people tell me it in Fahrenheit. And then I'm like, oh, God. Now I have to convert it. Then you get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, bird, bird, bird. I almost said Bermagoif because <laughs> I was reading Tarmagoif and I was saying burn. So I almost what said Bermagoif. What is a Tarmagoif? That's a great question, Joel. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you asked, Joel. So a Tarmagoif is a Magic the Gathering card. Ooh, <laughs> Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Gathering. It's a it's a card I own, and I'm not sure why it's in the the document there. <laughs> but we were talking about it before the podcast. Uh, it's yeah, a very there. expensive Magic the Gathering card that uh, you have an Applejack on it. Yeah, that I own, and I mm-hmm. I got I didn't get it altered myself, but I bought it altered, and it has Applejack painted on, like altered onto the Tarmogoyf to make the Magic card look like it's a Magic card of a green Applejack with a green Manda symbol on her bum, and oh, it's cool. uh, it's really cute. It's the one. Of, it's like the favorite card that I own. Like one of my uh, most when, when did you get it? Magic cards. I got it maybe three or four years ago. Sometime during like our podcast uh, in like the early days. Um, we might have even talked about it. Maybe like way Probably. back when. Yeah. But so, but, uh, I mean, a while. But, would you say that uh, friendship is Magic the Gathering? Yes. Yes, actually. So, fun fact: I actually had a Magic the Gathering playmat that said that on it. Friendship is magic. The gathering, uh, but it's a little, it's a little cringy, and I eventually changed my, <laughs> my. <Aww. plan. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that is our lives for this week. Um, so, well, at least that's as much time as we want to dedicate to it, because uh, according to all of these different things, we're incredibly boring people who talk about exams <laughs> and the weather, mm-hmm. um, and four-year-old magic cards. <laughs> Um, so we should probably go to something that won't be quite as boring. I was going to bring uh, up uh, burned CSS streams, but you know that's also boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yeah, drive up a mountain tomorrow. Code I mean, CSS. Yeah. That has to do more with uh, 
like with school and like exams. Like I've I've been working on one of my final projects for one of my classes. Oh God, why are we talking about <laughs> this? Please, and, God, no. It's just HTML and C- uh, CSS, and so I've been streaming oh. it on Twitch. It's yep. uh, it's pretty boring. I've been watching it. It's been fun, kind of. <laughs> yeah, with and all the other like the difference eighteen something people streaming programming on Twitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Super exciting. I guys. love I love it though because Twitch says. Uh, underneath it, it like it says usually like user is playing game and for you it says Brenda one is playing programming <laughs> and so losing good. profusely <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. kind of funny all right art right. art right. joel you're gonna have to actually get an art piece at some point. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it yay cool. okay so the first piece that we're going to bring up today is called welcome to equestria by verastaper uh, and this is a piece of Luna and Celestia, and it's split down the middle, and uh, Luna is on the left, and Celestia is on the right, and I really like it. It's symmetrical, basically, kind of in a way, but it's mirrored. also not symmetrical in a way. Have you guys ever played or watched someone play Trials Fusion? Yes. No. Okay. So, do you guys know the title song? For that game. <laughs> Trials Fusion. No. <laughs> it's a dangerous it's like, game. It's like, welcome to the future, man, machine, the fusion, I think. But it sounds like they're saying future. Um, anyways, as soon as I read this and as soon as you said it, you were like, welcome to Equestria by Vurastaper. That song went in my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our fans uh, mash up that together. Um, so yeah, that sounded much better in my head uh, when I was thinking about it. So this art piece looks really great, guys. <laughs> you just want to get off the topic, don't you? <laughs> what topic? Exactly. It never happened. Yeah. As soon as you said, I, as soon as you said, "Welcome to a quest you have I'm like, "Oh, have we featured this one? I'm sure we featured this one." Turns out it's a redraw. Yeah. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. We did we, we feature featured the original one. Yeah, yes. the original. Um, I like this I one not there for that much one. Uh, better than the original. Like, mm. just in terms of like skill, like how much he's improved, color, like how he draws the characters, like is is pretty sweet. I, mm-hmm. I like this one a lot. I gotta it's say, like, one. if you're Astapur, recently has like gone through growth spurts in his art. Like, it's amazing to see. Like, I I, I really enjoy this piece. I love like. Um, the layering in it, the colors, the lighting, the um, just the concept of the piece, the layout—it's it's really good. Yeah, I'm just gonna come out and say it. His anatomy's gotten a lot better, <laughs> <laughs> in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yeah, I I've agree. enjoyed his horses much better in the last six months than I ever had before. Mm. And to me, that was the thing that stood out as something that held me back from truly enjoying his art. So now that he makes some dang fine horses Mm -hmm. i i think that you know we're starting to see the true potential of view Hmm. he's gotten a lot better with his hair as well Mm -hmm. i think they made it out of these of of the two in this one as compared to the the two in the last one yeah it's the the (laughs) new one is a lot more fuller i think is the word that i'm looking for Volumes. Whereas the last one was more like thin and it was more drawn in, whereas this one it looks like a part of the whole thing. This one has depth, hmm. maybe I more can depth. See that? Can see that? Yeah, I can feel there's that. there's more layering. There's there's yeah. there's more sense of a foreground, a middle ground, a background. Yeah. I could see that for sure. Mm-hmm. Man, this is big. <laughs> I do this is huge. Really like his hairstyle in this piece. Um, yeah, because it's just like overlapping clumps of hair. Mm. Um, yeah i don't know it's just like it's different i don't i mean i've seen like similar things to it but i don't mm. think i've ever seen something like it this. looks almost braided but it's not it's still natural yeah. i was about to say that exact yeah, thing right. yeah <laughs> it's about to say like the exact same words too it almost <laughs> it looks like it's almost braided <laughs> Yeah, especially in lunas like i find lunas looks like that a lot especially near the end of the tail yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's cool it's good Mm-hmm. I like it. I like people's. I like people's takes on Celestia and Luna's hair because everybody has such a different way of doing it. Mm-hmm. And like, there's like been like eight to ten different ways that people have done it that I still really, really, really enjoy. Mm-hmm. So that's quite impressive. Yeah. Something that I really enjoy about this piece is uh, the, like the splashes of purple 
uh, in Luna's side for like the lighting, the reflected lighting, uh, like on the columns, on her wings, uh, even on the archway of the door. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's just like it's very vibrant and it kind of pops out. Um, mm-hmm. and I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Like views creating a duality here and he's using compliments for the most part so like where they're strong blues they're juxtaposed by strong oranges and then with those violets that are hitting luna they're strong yellows that are hitting um celestia so you notice that like the outline on like the arches and the doorway uh that they're in is like purple and then goes into yellow and so like using those uh strong compliments i feel like really polarizes each side of this picture which he like wants to do right and wants to have this like mirror reflection down uh, the center mm-hmm. and uh yeah i like I, I like that effect i like i like how he uses this because like one of my uh, critiques of view in the past has been like sometimes his use of color but in his last few pieces especially it's just been like really really on point yeah i think for me my favorite thing about this piece is the little touches in it that i didn't notice at first um, for example, uh, on the pillars on the left and right, you've got the three representations of pony kind. You've got earth ponies, unicorns, and pegasi, mm. um, represented with a hoof, a horn, and a wing. Um, additionally, at the top, you've got the elements of harmony. Uh, so you've got the magic one in the center, and you've got all of their cutie marks there uh, in this horseshoe. And um, these are things that I didn't pick up at, on at first because there was the heart in the center, there was the characters at the front, but they're really nice little touches that when you get to explore the piece a little bit afterwards, um, you can see them, mm-hmm. and it's kind of cool. Just like how the orbs up, up, top, up top the pillar, one of them looks like the sun and one of them looks like the moon. At yeah. first, they just look like yellow and blue orbs, but yeah. as you look at them closer, they gain a little bit more detail. That's so, um, Yeah, it's kind of like what he says in the, in the description. He says, this, although this one looks less busy than the old one and has a lot more content in it which mm-hmm. you, you see as you start looking at it like you said yeah definitely yeah. there's a lot of little subtle things like even like the kingdoms in the background you know yeah yeah i do like uh how the piece is not completely symmetrical uh like you have that cloud cloudsdale is like offset slightly even like twilight's castle at the bottom where the heart is like supposed to be at point is like slightly off-centered so the point of the heart doesn't actually come right to her castle, which I think is an interesting touch. It like, um, it it kind of gives the piece a little bit more uh, um, interestingness, I guess, to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also kind of doesn't have that like awkward weirdness of being completely symmetrical. Yep. Why is Cloudsdale there? Because it's a kingdom. Because it drifts around. It's yeah, not a yeah. kingdom. It's not a kingdom. You're not a kingdom. It's a city. It's a city in the sky that drifts around. Ponyville's not a kingdom. Yeah. Mm, but she has a it's castle. A city in the it's sky a, that drifts a castle around. There. There's no castle in Cloudsdale. It's like it's like a what? it's like a cloud castle. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's like I a floating castle. Like I just castle. used the term kingdoms and he's looking at Cloudsdale and like why is it in the picture? Uh, one oh. because I think it's pretty and it's like it's part of the main like areas within Equestria. Um, but the most different because it's pretty. Think of it like this, yeah. Joel. Okay. Okay. Stone can go suck it. <laughs> okay. Look, th- think of it like this. In in countries, there is a capital, which we've been over before um, earlier this podcast, but there's also a number of prominent cities that are unique. Let me and, educate and you on equestrian politics. Things, you know, that they're, they're prominent for a reason, population or something there, you know. Um, in the states obviously you've got places like boston you've got new york you've got la you've got seattle these are all big um cities that aren't capitals but you know they're they're still significant cities that you think of uh, when you capital. think of the us well not necessarily though but new- um, yeah new york's not the capital of new york right so in the same way these are significant landmarks within equestria and cloudsdale is one of those significant cities people talk about it all the time it's like the 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 main Pegasus city, mm. so because yeah. there's kind of something to represent each uh, a like Pegasus race. city, if you will. Mm. Yeah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons besides why it's as pretty in there, it's also incorporating kind of like the three races, right? Like Earth, Pegasus, Unicorn, and so and like Alcohol. like Pone, yeah, and so that the the little cities in the background kind of also resemble that. I would say like Earth Pony being in the uh, like Ponyville, then Pegasus, and then alicorn i guess i 
what is that? Is that the Crystal Kingdom or is that Luna's that's Castle? What I'm tra- that's like what I'm trying to figure out. That's the Crystal Kingdom on the yeah. left. Yeah. It's so kingdom. I would say that's a fair one to call like a unicorn kingdom maybe. For the record. Magic Kingdom. For the record. Mm. Yeah. About two years later, you guys called it the Crystal Kingdom. Nah, it's still mm-hmm. Empire to me. I just I gave win. up. <laughs> no, Crystal I Empire. Nope. win. <laughs> I win. Nope, it's still Empire. Yes. They mentioned it in the, in the finale. <laughs> Crystal Empire. Mm, it doesn't matter because you guys said kingdom. I and didn't. You all agreed. I didn't. You agreed. No. You, you we did. I agreed because I didn't want to have Ted, this argument. Ted, play back the audio. <laughs> play back the audio of Joel agreeing. I only agreed because I literally didn't want to have this exact argument. <laughs> mm, it's tasty. I can taste it. Eh, go play with your horn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will. <sighs> all right. Well, on that note. <laughs> this is an feud I didn't know existed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, let's move on to the next piece. Brandini. Yes, please. You majestic horse. Oh, my next. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Cool. All right, so the piece I chose for this week is called My Little Pony Jingle Bells featuring Rainbow Dash by Doggy31. And this is a piece that's different from what I normally feature because I usually try to feature something kind of like fancy, artsy, or very like painterly. Um, but this piece is done similar to show style and it's a lot more like simplistic than I would normally feature, but not in a bad way because uh, it's just talking about kind of the style and like cell shaded and things like that, you know. But uh, I really, I really enjoy this piece for several different reasons. Um, I think the main reason is that. I like how uh, Doggy31 uh, has done the characters, like, style-wise. Uh, it reminds me kind of Holovy. Or is it Holovy? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Holulu. Like Holovy. Holulu, Holulu, thank you, yeah. It, it's Holulu. Right. Um, it reminds me of Holulu style. Um, and it's just the characters are just really cute. Mm-hmm. I really like Ramadash's expression and, like, the, the funny Santa Twilight. And, yeah, it's cute. I think there's absolutely something to be said about being able to characterize these characters in the, in a proper way, you know, in, in a believable way. In uh, you know, you don't have them have them doing tropey things that they always do on the show, but can you create a scenario that shows off their personality despite whatever scenario they're in, right? And I think if you are if you're good enough, you can put them into crazy, fantastic scenarios like Rainbow Dash pulling them in a sled, which isn't part of the show. And you can still um, properly display each one of their own kind of personalities. And and you can envision these characters in this scene. And I think that's really important when you make fan art. It's not important to everybody and it's not the end of the world if it isn't. But to me, it's fun when you can combine the fan art with something that could be real, could be in the show. Um, and when you do expressions well and when you characterize the characters in the proper way, you, you get that little extra touch that kind of attracts people to it. Hmm. Yeah. I really like uh, the touch of Applejack's tail being bound with holly. It's kind of cute. Instead mm-hmm. of her normal band, like the red, you know, the red uh, headband. Yeah. They've all got little touches except for uh, Fluttershy that are kind of christmasy or at least wintry oh um well you can't really see a fluttershy yeah (laughs) well uh, it's funny you mentioned that because i didn't see rarity at first Hmm. um but yeah they 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 all have they all i suppose besides rarity and fluttershy i guess rarity has nothing either but or no she has a pink scarf you can see it behind pinky's head Mm -hmm. um but they've all got their own like unique wintry christmasy thing uh you know twilight's got a big beard which could be reminiscent of like santa claus which looks hilarious by the way i think it's a cloud she's, a, she's yeah it's a cloud yeah no she's cosplaying starlight or uh, um star Sun. squirrel the beard is <laughs> stupid character names <laughs> <laughs> um rainbow dash is obviously doing the whole reindeer thing uh-huh. uh, Applejack's she needs, she needs got a big mistletoe. red nose she does yeah she does <laughs> applejack's got the mistletoe tail of rarity and pinkie pie are wearing winter scarves it's got a they're they're nice little accessories right and when and these characters I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say something that's the characters are kind of bland by themselves, which is wrong. It's not actually true, but 
in terms of design, they don't have accessories normally. And so, you know, you can add that little touch, that little yeah. accessory, and it looks, it still look, manages to look nice. You can say that just because, like, we're used to the characters by now. So I think that's, like, a fair argument to make just because, like, yes. we know the characters from the show and, like, they have a very nice, like, unique design within the show itself. But then when we start looking at things like fan art, when you start seeing thousands and thousands of images of these characters that we know and love, it's nice to give them your own unique little twist. And so this artist has done that with, uh, like, the style and how the character features the faces and expressions are drawn and also like the cute little things that incorporates them into making this kind of like a seasonal festive little piece with uh the little mm-hmm. outfits and stuff like that right mm-hmm. yeah i just i just my favorite thing is twilight's beard it's so funny oh. to me i don't know why just her expression the beard how it all mer- merges together it looks fantastic I'm a fan of, uh what is it reindeer uh rainbow dash <laughs> reindeer dash really cute. reindeer dash yeah, yeah. Shin- Shinoda linked me a uh, reindeer rainbow dash today too. That was funny. Yeah, it's very cute. <laughs> yeah. Also, it it totally fits. Like rainbow dash would want to show off and like, look, I can pull you in this sled all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I get to be Rudolph. I want to be in the front. <laughs> this is this is the thing too, right? I hear a lot of people saying, "Well, what's rainbow dash's redeeming things?" Well, she can do something like this for her friends. You know, take them out on a nice little sleigh ride and do this stuff by herself. So there you go. Giddy yeah. up, friend. It's nice. And then you know. Twi- yeah. uh, or Fluttershy and Rarity are like screaming for their lives. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like quite the bumpy ride, so that's also pretty indicative of Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice Fluttershy's hooves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's shuddering and shaking. And her it's hair. Funny. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Licks a pink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please don't call this episode Licks a Pink. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go with another title, please. <laughs> I don't know if that's safe for you, dude. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I, I've talked a lot about expressions, so I don't want to talk about it anymore. But the expressions are really good. That's all I'm going to say about it is that they characterize the characters very, very well. The characters are very uh, characterizedly uh, char- characteristic. Ha! You screwed up mocking me. Ha! No. Oh. You lose all credit. Oh. Uh, I do. Ten years! <laughs> Dungeon. I do like um, the fact that their eyebrows are over their hair. Well, at least Rainbow Dash is in Twilight's because it like gives them yeah, such a more comical <laughs> expression, like Twilight. It's especially. an animu it's thing, an anime. Yeah. yeah. Although, if it was truly an animu thing, their eye, their eye outlines would go over there. Oh, well, I guess they do for Dash, yeah, but they don't Dash for does, but... they don't for the other characters. Mm-hmm. But it makes it so much better for Twilight mm. that it's her eyes. It's are not happening. quite. Yeah, it's not quite that an anime thing because I think a lot of times in anime, sometimes they'll do it like they do in Rainbow Dash, but sometimes they'll have the hair cover it, but they'll show the outline. Mm-hmm. Like they'll have the outline over the hair, but the eye will actually be under the hair. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's almost like it's like semi X raying through the hair, but not fully. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad nobody understood what I meant. Yeah. No, no. We, we, I know what you mean. We've, we've featured stuff like it before. Yeah. Yeah, or it's like the outlines of the outline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. We featured an artist that does it. Had him on the show. Her. It's outlines of the outlines? Uh, kind of. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> uh, so, guys, is this a vector? No. I don't think no. so. No. This is drawn. It looks, it's very yeah. clean. If it's, you look at it in full size, it's it's um, it's pixely. Well, I, I, it might be done with some, like, vectoring stuff, you know, or, like, a program. It is, uh, like, if I had a critique, it is kind of pixelated, a lot of things. Um, the, but didn't make the, that didn't make the background. The background's I, bad from someone else. So. Yeah, I would say it's drawn in a, with right. the program I don't know. It was like, yeah, I was looking in the description to see what it was drawn with, but... Yeah, yeah like, that's, an inter- well. that's an interesting thing, the fact that the background is done, you know, by someone else, because... Um, I think a lot of people would look at that and go, that's stealing. And it's like, well, it depends on the arrangement that the artist had with other artists yeah. and depends on the background and how the people have stated their background will be used. Yeah, I checked like on the background. It was just uh, another Deviant artist uh, yeah. redrew it from the show um, and said, like, it's just a redraw from the show. Use it what you will. Mm. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Buggy did. they said it's free to use. So going back to the I just want. I'm the- sorry, but just to, just to like cut like finish off that thread, I just wanted to make sure that people didn't look at that and go, "What do you mean he used a different background?" Mm-hmm. Like if you actually go and look it up, like the the person's like, "It's okay, you can use this. Just credit me," and he did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So there you go. On the outlines of outlines thing, this is what I was thinking of. In a Hoshi to Darkman does it a lot. Oh yes. It. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
okay yeah. that's exactly what i'm talking about and that's that's the when i think about the traditional animu thing that's what i think of mm-hmm. yeah is anybody sick of me saying animu yet no mm-hmm. but nah. now i'm just picturing cows for some reason <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well do you guys want to move on to the next piece then sure yeah sure okay it's mine um and it is called disconnect by dim fan hmm. and it is a certainly a very interesting piece it's triples with some yeah. crazy crazy uh cyans and bright reds and then all the crazy stuff in between and grays and things like that i saw this and i immediately went i love it <laughs> yep it's like I think we should start age. with that and that like I really love this piece too. I think the interesting thing is that I don't quite know why I love it so much. But if I can take a shot at it, I think it might be because despite it having extreme colors, it's made in such a it's it's so well made and the colors are so deliberate and well thought out that it it doesn't it's not hurtful to look at, you know, it doesn't hurt me to look at. And so because I can see how skillfully it's made with the colors, I, I go, oh, wow, that's really well done. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I like kind of the layout of the colors too. how like the reds kind of encompass the entire top arch of the piece. And then the blues are kind of encompassed by that but then like you know there's some reflected lighting of the reds like on this pony's arm i don't know i just it's interesting to me Hmm. yeah Hmm. it's kind of hard to see what's like there's a part of the piece down here with like the the musical note and the and the like the, the wires what is going on knobs there? levers is that a like i can't really tell what's going on like not only the color is a bit abstract so, but it seems like the pony I mean, itself is a bit confusing I'm, so far like i'm really enjoying that about this piece in particular though that dim fan did because there is a lot of stuff going on where it does make it h- kind of hard to discern or decide like what is going on it's kind of left ambiguous like the color makes it ambiguous or just how it's drawn makes it kind of uh confusing and i, re- I really enjoy that and so like these chords that were like looking at like I, I would say the fair to I think it's fair to say that this is like vinyl scratch um right. just kind of like because the hair looks like that and then there is the uh like her cutie mark on the on the hoof there and so it's definitely like an outstretched arm or like front hoof right and there right. are like some kind of wires kind of like coming out of it or it could be like her arm is like stretched out or got cut off i don't know i think it looks just like her <laughs> like normal disconnected hoof. like a wire I, I, thing what yeah. my my head wants me to uh to wants to say like oh i got cut off because i've been watching a lot of samurai jack and they keep like <laughs> dismembering robots and like right, they, the right. insides of them kind of look like that right but in other yeah. subjective areas like i really like the back of the hair so the that red c- like curves all the way around uh the head and then the red like goes into the hair and then like that reflection on the ear and then it kind of loses some uh like detail in there and then starts mixing into like the hair on the bottom and i can't tell if it's just like the red's reflecting the hair and it's behind the character or if the hair is actually red and like there's some detail there it kind of leaves it up for some interpretation and stuff and uh this is awesome Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think i think a lot of this piece you know lends itself to interpretation um the background the darker background what is that it's just a couple of different colors is it a dark is it a dark corridor is it a window is it a you know what's going on there you know what's going on with the anatomy there maybe an arm maybe not what's that thing like where's the body does it go down from there or it does it go behind the character like what's up with the eyes is it a cyborg pone is it vinyl scratch <laughs> does it you know like what are these tron red horse. things it's a tron <laughs> horse yeah yeah triple so it's like but like, what are these red things? Are they curtains? They seem to be manipulated, but at the same time, they're really red and they have cracks in them. Hmm. Who cares what they are? It looks awesome. It's big well, that, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's cool. You can look it's at cool it in full resolution you know. too. Yeah. Because I was just yeah. looking at it at the DeviantArt previews, and DeviantArt previews suck. Yeah, the DeviantArt preview when it's small, like JPEGs it. Oh, I know. Yeah, it does. DeviantArt previews suck. But yeah, full full resolution is awesome. Yeah. yeah so like I, I like i like the ambiguity i, I really enjoy it. It, it i find it amazing that you and by you i mean dim fan can create a such an ambiguous scene 
that still manages to be coherent in some form. You know, there's so much ambiguity in this piece, and yet it still manages to conform to a coherent art piece and that's super cool because yeah, even like the paint on the bottom of like the outstretched arm or hoof like if you notice those brush strokes they kind of just trail off and the only real thing that we have to like let us know that it's solid on the bottom of that arm is the kind of that uh crack or tron line kind of going through it where it looks like tron lines on the characters but then it looks like cracks in the red you know and mm-hmm. so, like, if that wasn't there, it would be really hard to see, like, oh, like, that's an arm because, like, the blue kind of just trails off into nothing and starts blending and, like, the cyan and blue kind of just blend together, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when, I, when I'm, when i you know, looking at it up close and I'm looking at the bright blues and, and the reds and the way that they're stroked with the brushes, like, almost like one over the, over the top of another one with a little bit of transparency, it's almost like it's pulsing. You know, like like these colors are pulsing out, like they're lights. You know, they're they're vibrant lights that are pulsing. It's it's yeah. really quite fascinating like, to me. It's mm-hmm. it's digital art, but there's like a textuality going on where, where it feels like there's a texture, or it looks like it. Or if you were looking at like a a traditional painting, you'd kind of look at how like the uh, paint is like specifically applied, and, and you would kind of maybe compliment on that. Uh, you usually do that a lot with a lot more like kind of subject subject or like ambiguous art. But in this one, it's kind of how, like, the digital paint strokes are applied and, like, color on top of color, like, in the hair. Or I really like in the arm and shoulder, there's, like, multiple forms of, like, colors, depths of red kind of overlaid on top of each other. And it's just, like, visually how certain colors uh, are applied physically, like, with brush strokes seem to be done in very kind of cool and unique fashions to make something like this be... Uh, like a really interesting visual experience more than just like, I'm going to, I'm going to paint a horse with bright colors. It's like, I'm going to paint a horse with bright colors in a very unique way. Um, and to make it like really visually interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, I find it interesting that they chose the color that they did for the character. That's kind of this darker gray and it does a good job of conforming to both of the major colors in this piece through kind of, ambient light that comes off of these other light sources um and you know manages to be neutral in such a way that doesn't take away from those colors Mm -hmm. we've complimented Mm -hmm. before that cyan and red are opposites on the rgb color spectrum um so i feel like that's what's really going on here when we have this really bright version of cyan and really bright version of red and i feel like it lends itself as a really sweet compliment to use specifically on the medium in which we're viewing it being our monitors because like my monitor its brightness is turned like all the way up and i have it on vibrant mode right now and like that red and that cyan just like hits you like right in the face but yet they counteract so much and i i'm i don't know i've i have like almost a new favorite compliment this like really bright cyan like really bright red they're 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 light compliments right they're lighting compliments yeah um and these are almost exactly the colors that are on that are opposites to each other we talk about um the traditional compliments a lot um but you know like you said for a direct digital piece this is uh, the compliment yeah. you know if you're so I, I imagine it's it probably loses a little bit Maybe not, because the colors are still quite vibrant, but it loses a little bit of that um, oomph when you print it out, I bet. Yeah, well, so, like, that brings up an interesting uh, conversation, like, talking about, like, RGB compliments and, like, uh, traditional compliments, because we've been talking about them a lot, and, like, I have been looking into that a bit since we've talked about it previously, and, like, there's nothing really defining those things as compliments other than their opposites on a traditional color wheel, um, and then we just kind of look at that, and we can observe that they do kind of reflect each other. But, I mean, once you translate that into an additive color uh, scheme, which is what this is, like the monitor that we're viewing this on, and you look at that color spectrum and turn that into a color wheel, and then you have these two colors being bright, vibrant red and bright, vibrant kind of like blue-green, like cyan, uh, they like just bounce off each other like extremely and creates a new type of complement on a different medium, which kind of changes the way that we traditionally look at like Mm -hmm. color interaction and kind of color theory because it's definitely Mm -hmm. way different color theory than what i learned in color theory the class in college right yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i think the digital age has brought up a lot of this this new you know these new concepts because of the difference between light and and physical pigment and it's quite interesting like how often do you get to look at art as a like a medium or but now on like a light source driven uh 
like platform. So I mean, that's kind of like a loaded question because we've looked at all the art on the show on uh, like a digital on on this but digital in the grand scheme that of like history. is our monitor. But but yeah, exactly. Especially in like the grand scheme of learning like art, like uh, it's like looking at the additive color scheme is like a completely different thing than normally like what you learn. You know, mm-hmm. sweet. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I mean, even in like um, modern subtractive mediums like a printer that's prints in cmyk it's the same kind of thing um because like if you were to print this out like using a cmyk printer i, I think it suck. wouldn't really no <laughs> <laughs> i think it would still be fairly vibrant i think you'd still get the same kind of impact from it i think it'd be very hard to print out it would be <laughs> incredibly require a lot of, i've had this i've had, actually had experience with this quite recently yeah. um silver and i did a did a cosplay a couple weeks ago for a convention we went we went as squids from uh, Inklings from Splatoon, right? Yeah. And the colors in Splatoon are so incredibly vibrant. And we printed out some um, like squids to laminate Newton's badges. But you can't print the colors that they need because they're RGB colors. And if you print them in CMYK, it looks like the color of the DeviantArt logo. Yeah. Like the, 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 well, that like, dull green, even though it's supposed there's... to be pure, saturated green. Yeah, I think what Ted's point though is is that if you could achieve these colors in like a traditional uh, way, uh, would they still have the same impact? And like, I actually don't know uh, how I I feel about that because I feel like on uh, I would say a personal opinion, these specific colors like this really really bright red and this really really bright uh, cyan, their impact is kind of caused by the light behind our that's monitor, what I was right? Say. Yeah, like the light that's being projected at us through our monitor, and so there's definitely barriers of keeping that that keep you from putting pigments like this on something traditionally or colors mm-hmm. like this you know because like uh that you're kind of you're kind of stopped by pigments but like there are like neon colors and way you can work around uh printing and if you could actually create pigments like this in a traditional form um like i don't know if you would be able to give enough strength or lightness to that specific uh pigment to be able to give it the same effect not on a digital medium you know yeah um, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I actually i actually don't know you know i mean we yeah. i mean I, I get where you're coming from not, i mean i agree i mean if you can't you can't like you said this is coming directly from the the bright white light behind your monitor and it's giving the, these colors that such bright vibrant quality that hits you in the eye and you go ow you can't you can't physically get that from something because it's reflected light. You can't get anything that's on paper or anything that's physical because it reflects the light. It absorbs some of the light and then reflects the color back to you. And yeah, yeah. it's not pure light. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not direct. It's reflected, and then when you when stuff reflects, it loses a lot of its energy. Yeah, yeah. So like that, that it's interesting because it changes kind of this. Uh, like the conversation about like color or like it changes the notion of how we see color how we see compliments right so you have Mm -hmm. like you were just saying like you have direct light being projected at you that in which you like you see and then you also have reflected light so when we look at a subtractive color scheme that's pretty much anything that has a pigment that accepts a certain light source and then reflects it back at us and then when Mm -hmm. you look at this a digital medium like our monitor is quite physically projecting additive light and color at us from the monitor and mm-hmm. like i i would definitely be on the argument side that that has a completely different effect than uh like a very traditional type of pigment form where it's reflected light right i feel like yeah. it's i feel like it'd be fair to separate those two and like they have a different effect on how we see them visually right well and even like lcd monitors too like are are not gonna be as vibrant as you can get too um because like i was shopping for a tv and um I took a look at some OLED TVs, which are crazy expensive, (laughs) but like you can get insanely vibrant colors on them because each individual pixel is emitting basically light. Um, Whereas on an uh, an LCD monitor, there's just a backlight and like the pixels are are opening or closing or the subpixels are opening or closing. So it's like, even if you look at like an LCD TV versus like an OLED TV, like you can notice a huge difference. That's why they're coming out with these OLED TVs. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, just like the amount of colors like on the spectrum of a light that can be projected at you. I mean, it feels just so much more broad than mm-hmm. and like open. Or the possibilities are greater than like a reflected light in forms of pigment. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's move on to the so, last I, I, I ranted enough. So... <laughs> I was just going to ask, based on our timing, do we want to go on to the last art piece, even if it's a bit short? Yeah, we've yeah. got a little bit of time. We can That's just kind of a question short. I like this piece. Cool. 
Okay, so mine is the next one. It is called One Smooth Beat by Anticular Pony. And yeah. even though I'm not Andy. really a big fan of jazz, I quite like this one. Even though it's it, got the word butt in the description, so I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does have the word butt in the description. You're not wrong. Yeah. I, was trying I to would be the first one to notice. It's okay. Beat doesn't spell butt. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's, it's, it's mm. Vinyl Scratch and Octavia. I don't like Vinyl Scratch. I like DJ Pony. But it's these two being all bluesy and jazzy and... Uh, DJ's got a trum- uh, trumpet and Octavia has her cello. Mm-hmm. And they're doing jazz I was thinking stuff. About... There's a big word, jazz, and neon signs right behind yeah. it. Yeah. I was I was thinking about putting bluesy and jazzy together, but all I got was juicy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This piece is super juicy. Like orange juice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'll yeah. go with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that like when I eat too many carrots? No, what? No, Joel. Okay. I'm what? so confused. Anyhow, <laughs> I really like this piece. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that it seems to have. Maybe this is unintentional, but it almost seems like there's a there's a bit of a haze, mm-hmm. almost like you know, like those you're in a smoky back club? in like the 30s, 40s. Yeah, yeah, you're in a bit of a smoky, you know, club where jazz would be playing. Um, it, it gives off that vibe a lot. Yeah. And uh, I thought that, that was really well done, whether or not vibe. it was yeah. intentional or not. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd say it's probably intentional. Piece. Like, it's all, it's dimly lit. Credit for that. It's dimly lit. It's the brick wall. It's the neon sign that says jazz. That's pretty tropey. Hmm. Yeah. You're pretty tropey. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I feel like Auntie was trying to be very blues brothery uh, with yeah. this, uh, like specific piece. Like, there's definitely a haze going on, like a filter, um, and like Auntie definitely probably put like certain color filters and stuff like over uh, the piece, like after it was colored. Because I know Auntie is is a person who loves their colors. Yeah, I mean, speaking of colors, it's like it's just so well done. Um, the whole like warm versus cool like uh lighting and shading uh i mean like octavia is basically uh fully in a cool color with like warm color highlights and sh- and silhouette marks and stuff and then vinyl is kind of the opposite i don't know it's like it pushes octavia forward and and yeah. dj to the back mm. uh it's so good yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. so What's interesting is cool colors usually recede and warm colors usually push forward. Mm -hmm. Um, But there is something kind of created uh, interestingly here where it does seem like um, Octavia is starting to like push forward and uh, and DJ Pony is starting to like recede. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, she is. He is physically in front of her. Play with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So there's that. But it's like the colors are kind of doing opposite of what you might think they're for or like that they might do if you were just looking at color specifically yeah. but like how how they're used in this piece i feel like uh changes how we might perceive them yeah yeah i think i think some of it feeds off of each other too you know like the colors feed off of the composition and and the kind of layering of the ponies and it kind of goes back and forth to help reinforce the depth mm. and and the layering mm. Mm. There's also a similar compliment going on here, too, that was kind of happening in Views piece, the very first piece we featured in this episode, where it's kind of using blues and violets and then uh, more oranges and reds than it is kind of yellows. Mm. Um, but it, it seems more like a stronger warm and cool contrast than what uh, View used in his, where like the yellow didn't in Views piece didn't have like a very like kind of strong uh, color or what is it, temperature balance. But in this one, like, it's very kind of like, like cool, shady, like a corner of a jazz club and then like hot, like hazy, like neon sign uh, version of the orange, right? Yeah. Hmm. I, was, I was actually going to point out that sign next. I really, really like that sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the same thing as we were talking about in the last one where you couldn't get this color physically. It's bright enough that it stands out and it looks like a neon sign. It's the right color it's the right um it, it gives it that weird sort of aura about it because it's so bright and in a smoky club um you've even got the the parts that in, in real life would be uh painted over so you don't so you can see the gaps between letters yep 
they're connected. Not, you have those yeah. gaps. And, like, it's all one glass tube, but then the area where they don't want you to see the neon, they actually paint it's, over it's, it in black, yeah, exactly. and so you can yeah. see the light showing through that. Mm. And it's then all, in the cracks, too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's... Cool. Um, he's done a very good job in that. I, I, oh, I yeah. like that. Sorry. I learned something new about neon lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all one continuous tube all filled with and they, neon. And that is painted yeah. over. I've seen yeah. them making it. It's pretty crazy watching them make it. Oh, cool. Cool. That's such a nice Last touch. Blowing. <laughs> yeah. That's such a nice touch putting all the, like, the, the clacks. Cracks. <laughs> cracks. The clacks. Um, Your clack, 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 clack. is not cooperating with you today. Glowing neon in, in, uh, in the bricks. It's really, yeah. it's a pretty sweet touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clacks. Uh, <laughs> all right. I, well, shall we clack our way into the next section? Uh, one more yeah, you thing. probably should. Go ahead. Okay. okay. I wanted to just say that I thought it was really cool how they, um, or how Anti put the correct mute into the trumpet. He did his research. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the hat. <laughs> and the hat. With a little ear hole. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. Okay. So that is our art for this week. Let's move on to Le Question. Okay, so we're going to do this first question. It is by Sun and Blitz, because they all are. If you could <laughs> enter the world of video games in the Tron style, which game and character would you choose? So, everybody needs to think about this very carefully, because if they choose something like Mass Effect, you realize you're going to be stuck like somewhere in like the middle of the galaxy being like tormented by people. <laughs> so... <laughs> Pick wisely. All I can choose in conversation is dialogue. All right, I'm going to go what? first. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go first. Go ahead. Pokemon. Okay. okay. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's kind of got like Pokemon. No one ever dies in Pokemon. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. That's a good answer. I like that answer. I mean, yeah. all, the, all, the, all the other video games that I like is all... Everything, everything bad happens to everybody except the main character, like Halo and Gears of War and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and Fallout that I'm currently playing. Yeah. 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 So Pokemon. Um, <laughs> does it have to be video games? Uh, yes. I mean, you can't, okay. you can't really be the Monopoly guy. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in the universe of the video game. Avatar The Last Airbender because <laughs> that was a video game. <laughs> You're going to be one of the... I'll accept it. You're just going to be, one of, yeah. You're just gonna be one of the Earth Kingdom people that don't have any earthbending powers. <laughs> I want to be a bender. <laughs> you're the, it's cool. You're the All right, fine. I'll think, I'll think of a better answer. You're doomed to be the Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you're the cabbage guy. Can't even <laughs> bend. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced you're secretly a cabbage bender. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, why do you think? Why do you think I'm always what pressing? About Ted? You know, Ted, for time. What, Ted, what about you? To uh, get my cabbages in order. I'm trying to think. Burn. Um, <laughs> Jeez! Wow, you took pressure and asked over me. <laughs> well, you said you were thinking, so. Well, yeah, and I thought of it. Okay, Sorry, time's well, up. What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say Splatoon. Hey. Yeah. I'm proud um, of this because it'd be very colorful. It'd be incredibly colorful. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. But you've never actually played what, the game. What games do I play, I've seen guys? You rocket League. Times. You'd be a Rocket League car. No. I want to no. be a soccer car. <laughs> soccer car. Can I be a soccer car? No. <laughs> you could. Uh, you could be in. Keep talking and know it explodes. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> that's a bomb defusal game. <laughs> yeah, but you talk a lot, so you'd be fine. I think it would be cool. To be in the world of Walker. either Bastion mm. or Transistor. I don't know either of those things. I think that would be good. Bastion is one of the best games ever made. Yeah, you so should shut your mouth. play Bastion ever. because Bastion's amazing. Yeah. But like they're um, both dystopian futures. Like Right, but I think so um I'm not gonna spoil it, <laughs> but like basically the way that Bastion is as you play it is the universe that i would be in as like one of the few people who is left yeah is what i mean that's true so because you, you have to be inserted in as a character right that's the rules of this thing right so it's like i guess the rules is like pick a character but yeah. we're saying like we're inserted into the universe so it's like yeah i would be in i would be a character in the bastion universe as you play through it in the game mm -hmm. uh, or a transistor that would be cool too because it looks like that's a fun kind of city 
futuristic thing. That also kind of looks like Tron in a way. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. A little bit more actual city yeah. and a little bit less yeah. fake city. What about yeah. Burned? Uh, Magic the Gathering I, isn't a video game. It actually is. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, but it was a card If game. I can't say Avatar. Like, there are several Magic the Gathering video games. <laughs> um, but I would not want to be in the world of Magic the Gathering because that is a very cruel world. <laughs> um, but I guess so are most video game worlds. Like, I don't know, man. I don't That's really, what's so hard about it. I don't really like, want so many video game to be suck. in a video game world unless I can think of some random cool one, but I can't. So, I guess Warcraft is kind of cool. Yeah, you could live yeah. a regular life in Warcraft. That'd be cool. Oh, but what, it's what just about, like... What about League? No. What's, what's, the, <laughs> what's the Mario game where he's baking stuff? I, that, I, I want to be Dr. Mario. Cookie, cookie. Mario. cookie, cookie, cookie. yeah. <laughs> cookie, cookie. <laughs> Hot pills. I want to be the cookies. Yoshi's Cookie from, like, the Super Nintendo? Maybe. I don't know. There was one where he where it was like cakes or something. I don't know. Can I, I just sure be that's not like a Mario Party mini game? Can I be crying Maybe baby Mario is. from like Yoshi's Island? <laughs> Yoshi's Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Just everywhere good. there's overly happy theme music. What about Minecraft? You can just make everything you want. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'd be in the Paper Mario universe. Oh yeah. Uh, there you go. The universe is fun. Your paper, everybody's got a good sense of humor. Yes, sometimes things go a bit crazy, but Mario saves. It would oh, suck if it rained. I, I would be <laughs> in the Paper it's Mario. Paper universe. rain, it's fine. I would be in Kirby <laughs> Kirby's Epic Yarn. Oh, Have you played Yoshi's cool. Woolly World? No, oh, but I've seen it played. So good. It looks Does so amazing. My Little Pony, the video game count. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's not a video game. You went full neckbeard there. It was great. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the answer to that question. We gave like three, mm-hmm. yeah. so that's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. 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 Jim Carrey. Yeah. A national treasure. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Also, anti-vaxxer. I uh, don't particularly care about his personal life. <laughs> <laughs> I just like his movies. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want to do the next question because that's complicated and would require Burn to talk for like five minutes. I'm right out of time. So, like, are we? Yeah. Sorry, Bert. Yeah, we're at 57 minutes, so, ah. yeah, basically. Yeah. Should we do another quick one, or? Uh, it's up to the other guys. I'm fine with I that. can give you a quick question for the one we have selected. All right, fine. A quick answer, rather. Okay. Go ahead, Joel. All right. Question by Ramslack. If one wants to sell or buy art, how would one go about doing so in an easy way? All right, you ready? You ready for the quick answers? Mm-hmm. If you want to sell art... One of the best options, I feel like, is Redbubble or some type of website like that where they do all the work for you. If you want to buy art uh, and you are just a normal person, you want to buy it from an artist, you ask. That is the easiest way. Mm-hmm. You say, hey, I would like to buy this artwork. And you can do that through their Tumblr, through their DeviantArt. You send them a note and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that. Yeah. But see, like, Redbubble takes such a huge chunk of your money. They do. Yeah. But uh, that's all for basically convenience. Yeah. So that is the, uh, what is this? This ask, what would you go to in an easy way? That is like, quote unquote, the easiest way is to use some kind of online platform right. to print yeah. and ship your art for you that you give them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you slowly learn how to do it yourself yeah. and then you make yeah. more money. So mm-hmm. like Dark Flame is an example of a dude doing it the hard way, but he's, a re- but he's like, he's a champ. So like he prints all his own prints, ships them out, does all that kind of stuff all by himself. But uh, he does a lot, a lot of work for it, and it ain't easy. So mm. take that chunk out of your pocket. That's the easy way. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the questions for this week. So let's go on to the plugs as we wrap up our show. Okay. So... <gasps> We have a few places you can find us. Picado.tv slash Crusaders is where we stream. QDRCrusaders.divinite.com, QDRCrusaders at gmail.com, YouTube.com slash Crusaders to watch our previous episodes. QDRCrusaders.tumble.com, Facebook.com slash Crusaders and at QDRCrusade on Twitter. And that was all one bro. What wow. a champ. Wow. Nice. Gerd Jerb. <laughs> what's, what's a gerb? Gerd Jerb. Jerb. Okay. Well, um... That is everything for this week, guys. Uh, we have got nothing else. Um, and now that our last week, last week we did our spoiler cast for mm. the season five finale and the entire uh, season five season. 
So we won't have a spoiler cast after this. That is done for with the season. So we don't have anything else for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I remember what I didn't get to talk about. What? <laughs> the Comcast guy stories. I haven't told oh, yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. All right. Well, that's a teaser for next week, folks. We'll have to write no, that No, we'll one forget down. about it until this time next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We're going to write it down, and we'll have it for you guys next week. That's a teaser. Um, but, well, yeah, yeah, that's everything, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, um holiday stuff is coming up soon yes our holiday episode is coming up in a in a few episodes send us in your holiday related art and or it doesn't have to be made by you it can be made by other people mm. um holiday related questions holiday related art to our email qdarkcrusaders at gmail.com <gasps> and if we have if we put it on the show and you recommended it then we'll put your name somewhere uh and hey, stuff like that hey guys it's been a while since we had a fan art episode maybe for like new year's we can do a fan art thing yeah, maybe. So if yeah. you want to send us in New Year's themed fan art, we will feature it. Or Christmas themed. Or Christmas themed. Or, or themed. Atmos Park Sorry, themed. Joel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the whole point okay. behind fan art. Though. Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's do that randomly. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Spontaneously. Yay on the fly. Uh, 2016 beginning with fan art. There you go. Yeah. Fan art episode next couple of weeks. Send it in. Send it in by the end of the year. Yes. And then by the end of the, by 11.55 p.m. on December 31st. 31st. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we will include it if you guys. And this this is for anybody. So feel free to send it in, even if you haven't sent in one before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we will feature you on the show. Okay, but that is everything for this week, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening and doing all your amazing fan stuff. Um, thank you guys for all of that whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube we love you all the same my name is Rainbow Plasma my name is Vern I'm Flutter Guy 317 and I'm at Spark. and we'll see you guys later next week bye bye